So uh, only 30% of autistics are straight. 70? An overpowering majority of 70% of autistics are queer. <laughs> Welcome to this space on the internet. So I'd like to think that this video is particularly relevant having just begun and celebrated Neurodiversity Celebration Week. During Neurodiversity Celebration Week, we celebrate diversity in cognition as a product of natural variation. We call this neurodiversity, which you can also think of as the idea that we're all wired differently. Some more drastically than others, usually we refer to these people as neurodivergent. Some qualifiers of neurodivergence being things like ADHD, dyslexia, OCD, personality disorder, Sort of schizophrenia, Down syndrome, epilepsy, Tourette syndrome, and maybe most famously, autism. And today we're going to be talking about autism, specifically autism as it relates to queerness. There is an undeniable link between queerness and autism in the sense of both sexuality and gender. I want you to note that most if not all of my information is coming from very western sources and will thus be mostly if not exclusively relevant to westernized countries. Additionally many of my sources will probably not be inclusive to the experiences of indigenous or people of color due to racism in the research and medical fields as well as just racism caked into the foundations of our society including how whitewashed media understands autism and queerness. And with that I encourage anyone, and by anyone I mean people who are specifically impacted by this, as in BIPOC people, to correct me or add information in the comments for anything I say that seems to be lacking in nuance as it comes to any minorities, but particularly racial minorities. I clearly am not able to comment on the experiences of indigenous and people of color, that would be entirely inappropriate, and I do encourage you watching to seek out BIPOC creators to learn more about their experiences and also just to support their content. With that said, let's learn about autism and queerness. So we're going to start off with some context. One source mentions the rise in kids seeking gender-related care in the 90s and how the frequency of autistic individuals or individuals exhibiting autistic traits was noted among this particular group of kids seeking gender-related care. Apparently this sort of sparked the interest in researching and quantifying the link between autism and gender. Gender diversity, transness, gender queerness. So I just would like to point out that autism only became a diagnosis in 1980 and was heavily revised in 1987 going to the 90s. So during the 90s, autism was already experiencing a bit of a boom in terms of awareness. And a lot of people now will go on about, oh, it's an epidemic epic it's an epidemic of autism and we're seeing a steady increase in the rates of autism and that's a bad thing for some reason. Because it's not we don't have more autistic people, we're just recognizing more autistic people. And the correlation that I would like to point out is that queerness has a similar trajectory and I don't think it's a great leap to say that a lot of people would be quick to point out now that queer people are on the rise and that's a real bad thing for some people. But yeah, it is more common to see people out and about be in their little queer selves. My point being that both queerness and autism seem to have been experiencing an influx in recognition around the same time, and thus a sort of link between the two would be easier to spot. One particularly compelling aspect of the link between autism and queerness is that it works in two directions. So that means that a large portion of autistic people are queer, as well as a large portion of queer people being autistic. And I'm not by any means a statistician, but no doubt that is a very strong incidence when the connection is made between both groups of people in both directions. So, queerness in autistic people. How common is queerness in autistic people? There are actually a number of studies that investigate this, especially as it relates to gender identity, or they like to call it gender diversity, which is actually sort of a sweet term. I like it. In one study, 15% of autistic adults in the Netherlands identified as trans or non-binary compared to just less than 5% of the general population. Another study run in the US surveyed autistic adults and adolescents. 6.5% of autistic adolescents and 11.4% of autistic adults said that they wished to be the gender opposite to that which they were assigned at birth. Only 3-5% to of the general, or generally not autistic, population said the same. 
Apparently the study also found that a higher indication of autistic traits was correlated with a higher likelihood of gender diversity. This link has been discovered across multiple studies, actually, seemingly regardless of an actual diagnosis of autism, as the correlation has been made with demonstrating autistic traits as well as having a diagnosis of autism. I'd like to note that this study had a much higher rate of male than female participants, 469 assigned boys and only 104 assigned girls in the adolescent group, and 616 assigned males and only 191 assigned females in the adult group. And I believe this is reflective of an outdated ratio of boys and girls, males and females, men and women in autism diagnosis, when in fact I read a recent study out of Australia that suggests that that ratio is completely off, that having been one girl to every like three to five boys depending on what your source is and it's actually closer to four autistic girls for every three autistic boys and that diagnosis is simply highly skewed towards boys again this study was conducted out of australia and is likely white dominated autism in the gender diverse populations autism is more prevalent in gender diverse populations than in cishet populations or the general populations, and significantly so. One source suggests that autism is three to six times more common in gender diverse people than in the general population. And I'm just gonna read this quote. A 2018 Australian survey of transgender adolescents and young adults found that 22.5% had been diagnosed with autism compared to 2.5% of all Australians. 22.5% of these surveyed transgender adolescents, these transgender teens, had been diagnosed with autism, compared to 2.5% of the general Australian population. And, reportedly, gender clinicians and researchers, autism clinicians and researchers, and key stakeholders including autistic and autistic transgender self-advocates support the link between gender diversity and autism. Some estimating that between 6 and 25.5% of gender diverse people are autistic. That's up to one in four. This particular study emphasizes the compelling nature of the 19 empirical studies available at the time, seven of which were based on an autism diagnosis as opposed to simply autism traits, which dismantled the argument that the link between autistic traits and queerness wasn't to be trusted because the tools that measured these autistic traits could be indicative of other mental or developmental disorders other than autism. So it seems that both autism diagnoses and autistic traits are both heavily associated with gender diversity, whether that be dysphoria specifically, or as they like to say, gender diversity. Sexuality and autism. It's not just a link to gender. Sexuality is also noted to be more varied among autistics than allistics. I'm going to read this part because honestly to me it just seems so awesome. Only 30% of autistic people in a 2018 study identified as heterosexual compared to 70% of neurotypical participants. And although half of 247 autistic women in a 2020 study identified as cisgender, just 8% reported being exclusively heterosexual. So uh, only 30% of autistics are straight, 70? An overpowering majority of 70% of autistics are queer? I think that's amazing. Now let's address some intersectionality. Many sources are quick to point out that as disabled people, we are less likely to receive adequate sex education, particularly that which includes LGBTQ plus information. But in a qualitative summary, autistic people are also less likely to abide by social norms, and thus some people claim that we are more likely to express our true, authentic gender identity. One source notes that autistic people can be denied or brushed off when it comes to seeking gender-related care, whether that be gender-affirming medical interventions or psychotherapy related to their gender identity. Though it seems safe to assume that autistics are more likely to experience medical negligence, gaslighting, trauma in general, this experience is likely inflated drastically when you are also of a racial minority. Given that queerness and autism intersect heavily, it's also important to keep up to date and to alter our current methods of screening for, identifying, diagnosing, and providing support for autistic individuals who are also queer, in the same way that we should be refining these tools to support autistic girls and women. In my reading, I came across a point that I'm going to read to you because it really jumped out at me. Clinicians should be aware that autistic people may present their gender identity differently than neurotypical people do. Some autistic people who transition from one gender to another are not aware of how they need to change their social cues, such as how they dress, if they want to clearly communicate their gender identity to others. 
Clinicians can help autistic people navigate these transitions to ensure that they have the same access to gender-affirming medical care that neurotypical people have. And this is just really weird to me. Why do autistic people need to transition neurotypically? Of course, like, if they've expressed a desire to pass in a particular way, I think it's okay for people to point out to them how that is likely going to happen, but passing isn't everybody's goal. Passing is actually pretty irrelevant in many circumstances. So if we don't feel the need to pass a particular way, and are happy with our gender presentation and our internal sense of identity, let us be, maybe? Let us transition autistically, and maybe try to alter your view of what trans looks like to include autistic people, as opposed to shoving autistic people into your preconceived view of what trans looks like. That's all I have for you in this video. Are you queer and autistic? Do you have friends who are? Do you have people in your life who are? Do you observe this intersectionality in your daily life at all? I'd love to hear about anything you have to say in the comments. Farewell lovely humans, see you next time in this space on the internet. Love you! Bye!